our attack culture. Folks, really, we need to work at changing our minds. We live in a world where exploitation, derision, and small-mindedness are played out as normal. I don't indulge in any of these things because I realize they're not an indulgence, they're a way to keep yourself stuck, mired in the shit that we have all been subjected to here, while all the while our hearts know there is better to be had if only we create it. I keep asking you not to send me messages, and now especially messages where the potential to ridicule others exists. If every person doesn't make the effort to change what has been, it will continue to be what it was, a toxic society that does not respect the rights of people. Hopefully COVID will change that now as people realize they have a common enemy and begin to side up with each other and support each other. I'm sure this isn't perfect, though, because there will still be egotistical infighting nonetheless. We all want the earth to change, but there's no point waiting for everyone else to do it, start with yourself. It has to stop with you. No matter what some troll wants to start with you, do not attack them back. Take the shot and transmute the negativity it brings up within you. This doesn't make you weak, it takes a strong person to manage their mind. Your mind is your tool that you direct as a consciousness and it's the powerhouse that creates all that you experience in life. If it's lax and tends to just snap back at anyone who tempts it then it's a weak mind. Strength is having the power to say, no, I'm not going to lower myself to that level. That is the only way to stop darkness from festering within you and to stop retaliation. Do I love everything about our life here? Absolutely not. However I'm not here to make it worse. That would be misusing my God-given powers and aligning me with darkness. For that reason, I stay away from people who still enact this toxicity. I want nothing to do with them. Last night I watched a rock video that apparently I'd commented on before. Someone responded to my comment by calling me an idiot. Yes, just because you don't agree with me, that makes me an idiot, does it? Think about that. Think about it hard. It just means we have different opinions. Why do you have to attack, yes, attack, a person who might disagree with you? Are you that insecure and esteemless that you have to attack anyone who doesn't view life your way? You are so insecure that you'll take any opportunity to try to inflate your own sense of self-worth by thinking others less than yourself? What I find is that people who do that get caught in traps of their own creation. They are unable to leave the worthless self-worth trap because they derive a dopamine hit whenever they see someone they can attack. So with that, I suggest that many on our planet are addicted to attacking others. Why would they stop something that makes them feel good? Well, simple, because it's a lie and the truth of who they really are is much more fantastic. For those of us who feel deeply, you may have an unfortunate moment upon experiencing even being called an idiot by someone who just makes that flippant remark without caring about how you might take it, but that's the way it is here, not very pleasant at times. You are dealing with a person who not only doesn't care about you, they don't care about themselves either because believe me, if they call you an idiot once, they've called themselves that many more times. Or maybe they're a narcissist, the type of person who's very defended against their own inferior self-image, but believe me, it's there. What I feel this world is lacking is maturity. This is very immature behavior, as a matter of fact I see my neighbor's eldest son picking on his brother in the same way. Children behave this way and frankly it's high time the people on this planet grow up. If you are always looking for someone to put down, you will never be able to see the good in life. How many pessimists do we try to help see the better side of life, and they just snort and say, as if, refusing to even budge from their toxic viewpoint. If you are always looking for someone to attack, you will never be at peace yourself, will you? Because when you are on the attack, you are in a highly anxious state, not a peaceful one. Exploitation is another one. People think that friends are there to do things for them. No, they're not. Making friends with someone is about liking who they are, not what they can do for you. But how can you even make friends on that basis when you are busy attacking others for being different from you? You can't. Thank you Ivo. I didn't even think of that. You can't be friends with anyone on the basis of caring and respect because you're too busy attacking everyone else in the world. Your friends, the people you use to get what you want, are there to fulfill your idea of what life should be, and when inevitably they let you down, you will attack them and you will feel annoyed again because of the stupid people in your life. So by default, those who attack tend to be exploitative or exploited as well. I prefer to relate to power over self people, and as for friends, I have the perfect friend already, Ivo. Understand I don't want to be part of the power over others system anymore. You will all have to do this either now or in future, 
the more you change and gain in personal power. I suppose many of you will change along with the system as it changes, so you'll feel more comfortable than I do now as a self-empowered person. The more you gain in personal power now, you will find the more society will fight you. The temptation to fall back into old ways is always there in the form of mind control, but it's hardly tempting because I know it's a way of life that offers me nothing. I'm not going to explain why you should stop these things. If you can't see the benefits behind your mind being a more peaceful place to exist, far be it for me to tell you. What's more, a peaceful mind creates a peaceful life that works for you. That's just the first benefit you'll derive from giving up these behaviors. There are far more, one of which is the self-respect you've been looking for all your life. Your ego can't give that to you, it can only give you a cheap alternative, an addictive cover-up of your insecurities that looks like you respect yourself but you don't. It can't give you the power you seek, only your soul can. The self-respect you feel through your soul lasts and has strength, the substitute your ego provides is temporary and is a poor defense against your shadow which constantly tells you you are flawed. Leave the attack culture behind and join those who experience peace and love in their minds and in their lives. You're either shaming and blaming, or you're living and forgiving. What do you have to lose? You're afraid that if you do, you'll become a lamb, a target for others who are still in the power over others system. No, you won't. You won't forget everything you learned, and frankly you'll be able to see right through others who are still living in the attack mindset. You'll be able to set boundaries and to be able to choose who you want to be friends with. Granted, I find there aren't as many people in this mindset as there are the attack culture, at least from my perspective, maybe you know more. Wouldn't it be nice to have a conversation with someone knowing they're not going to pull a verbal knife out from behind their back and stab you in the heart? Wouldn't it be nice to have a conversation with someone where you can speak your mind, knowing they won't take it personally? Wouldn't it be nice being able to have a conversation with someone who's secure enough that they don't take everything you say as a judgment of their character? This is my relationship with Ivo. He's absolutely wonderful and I finally found who I was looking for. I'm only starting to enjoy this for the first time in my 60 years on earth. All the people I knew before were people who were attackers, people whose self-esteem was so bad they had to fight everyone around them. They couldn't let others be the way they were, they had to try to change them through intimidation. That's what this really is, isn't it? Intimidation of others so that you don't feel intimidated. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog mindset. Wouldn't it be nice being able to speak your mind without fear of hurting other people? Wouldn't it be nice to have a conversation without feeling you're walking on eggshells and it's only a matter of time before someone objects to what you've said and pulls out their verbal knife to take off a piece of you? To enact retribution because you said something they didn't like? Obviously I don't walk on eggshells. I speak my mind whether people like it or not. I don't change my message because someone might not like me for saying it. I think this world needs to change, and you're listening. What you've learned is all baloney. Live and let live. On Facebook, I have a policy that if the first I see of you is the laughing face, you're cut off. I'll block you. I personally hate the laughing face because it's so misused. I go on other people's posts and I see notifications coming up that someone commented on my comment, and I just delete them. I'm not interested in seeing whether someone agrees with what I've said or if they're attacking me. I said my piece, it was to the poster and not the people following them. So you see the potential for triangulation here, don't you? Yes, social media is set up to allow for triangulation. The poster is seen as either the perpetrator or the victim, and the commenters are either the rescuer of the poster, or new perpetrators. When I comment, I comment to the poster, nobody else. So I don't care what others have to say about my comment. As you can see by last night's rock and roll comment, commenting just starts shit. Someone told the guy who told me I was an idiot that they were an idiot. Really people, stop triangulating. I don't need to be rescued, I've already rescued myself just like we all have to do now. That's why comments are turned off on my videos, I'm talking to each of you and since most of you don't know each other, then it's me talking to you and you can make of it what you will. If I were to put comments on, the trolls would be there calling me an idiot and those of you who still are on the victim triangle would either be siding with me or siding with the troll. That's how this is all created, folks. All this drama. Someone in my past told me that having two cats is okay, it's when you have three that they start siding up with each other. Apparently humans aren't that different. That's why you have to take back control of your mind and stop playing ego games. Awareness is key. 
All you have to do when you feel that urge to attack someone is say, no. I'm not going to do this. Hit the off button on your computer or shut down your phone if you need to until you gain control of yourself again. Let your feelings of wanting revenge pass. If you're looking to make friends, ask yourself what you see in them. Is it who they are or what they do or what they can do for you that makes them so appealing? Do you respect them? What do you want from them? If all they did was converse with you, would that be enough? Are you wanting them to help you or to fix you? I feel people who laugh at JB are missing the point, he is teaching us a great lesson in self-empowerment. Those who laugh at the deep state players, those who laugh at the CCP, those who sit there and make nasty remarks about these things, what's underneath your laughter? What are you really feeling? It's fear, I'll bet. I personally don't love Trudeau and I would love to see him booted out of politics and frankly arrested for being the murderer and pedo that he is, never mind for selling out Canada to the CCP, and it's not easy some days to want to attack him but what he's showing me is that I can still be that way too. And when you want to attack someone else, that means they control you. You don't have control over yourself. This whole DS globalist agenda is a lesson in personal power for everyone on this planet. Use it as such. It has a lot to teach you. If you've listened to this video and think I'm an idiot for writing it, I feel sorry for you because it's you that's missing out. If you're learning as we are all learning now, my hat goes off to you.